Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. Today we're going to be revisiting the classic Elite 2.0 Turbine. This was the second video I recorded on my channel, and it did pretty well when it came out. How has this blaster held up since then? Well, let's find out. And if you've read the title of this video, you probably already know where this is going. <laughs> and I can't just automatically give my opinion right at the start, so let's just start with the design. In my original Turbine review, I said that I liked the design more than the Rapid Strike. Yeah, that's obviously not the case anymore, but I still do like the design. Not only does the blaster just generally look really cool and have a really interesting compact design, but it is generally compact. It is a small blaster. It's only a little bit bigger than the Strike, and it is substantially smaller than the Hyperfire or the Rapid Strike. And even though the stock is really short, I prefer to just use it as a wrist brace and hold this blaster like a carbine of sorts. If you do that, it works way better than if you try to actually shoulder it like this. This is just pain, this works very well. Unfortunately, that's all I can really say about the design, because once you've seen one Elite 2.0 blaster, you've seen them all. All of the release Elite 2.0 blasters have the same details, just in different places. Look, here's the two knobs, and the grill, and the orange bit, and the barrel attachment, and it's just, it is a generic Elite 2.0 blaster, though I think it does look pretty cool, and again, I love the design. Let's cut to the ergonomics. As I just said, the stock is not a stock, it is a wrist brace, so we're just going to ignore that because please don't use it as a stock, please hold it like this. But if we go to the main grip, it's really good. I think that the Elite 2.0 style grip works the best for the turbine just because it's made for like big primary blasters like this. And this foregrip is the best foregrip I've seen on any fully automatic blaster like this ever. It's better than the Infinis for sure, it's better than the Rapid Strike not really having a foregrip, and it's even better than the Hyperfire since it's not mounted so low and being completely horizontal. It is the perfect angle and has so much of a nice pleasant design to hold on to. I think the ergo on this blaster has been nailed extremely well. As if that wasn't enough, I feel like the designer of this blaster really tried to go all out because they put the batteries at the back of the stock and then all the internals up ahead, making the blaster incredibly balanced with one hand. And even then, it's light and it's easy to maneuver around corners and stuff. It's very swooshable for being a fully automatic blaster. I am swooshing this with one hand and it is not hard to do at all. The foregrip and just kind of the wrist brace stock just make it, oh it's so good to hold on to this thing. Unfortunately, this is where all the positivities end. It's time to talk about the triggers. Yay! This blaster has got all three of them and they all suck. Well, except for the main trigger, I'll get to that in a moment, but let's just start with the obviously bad one. This is the mag release. It commits all three sins of a nerf mag release. One, it's mounted inside the trigger guard. Two, it uses a plastic spring. And three, that plastic spring is mounted from the bottom, making it so that you can only use it if you push on the top. Look at this. That is pain. And it is generally painful to get this thing out once you've done it four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. As if that wasn't enough, the trigger itself has details on it which are pretty much sharp and jagged and actually hurt your finger when you use it. But let's just stop talking about that, let's talk about the other two. Rev trigger, and it's got a really smushy pull to it because of the plastic spring in there, but it works well enough, I guess. As for the main trigger, yeah, I don't really have any complaints to it. It's probably the best designed plastic spring out of all three of them, but it's still a plastic spring. Even then, it's actually got fillets on it, which is better than I can say about either the rev trigger or the mag release, so I don't know. Let's just get on to the functionality. So how does this thing work? Well, it's a fully automatic blaster. You put your magazine in, and we'll get to that later. Then you rev it, and then you fire it. And then to take the magazine out, you push this forward, and it's... It does not feel good. Also, really quickly, this is the jam door. We're just gonna ignore that. So anyway, yeah, let's get onto the firing demo. First firing this is basically useless because it's a fully automatic blaster. It's gonna be an annoying trigger delay. So I'm just going to rapid fire the whole 18 round magazine that is included with the blaster. Oh, was that slow? Well, it didn't used to be. If you took a look at my original turbine review, that used to be really fast. What happened? 
it's time for everyone's favorite segment, quality control. So, you guys remember the Hyperfire, right? This was a pretty good blaster and it still holds up to this very day. What's the difference? This one does not. This blaster I've had for a little under two years, maybe two years or so, and it is cooked. Basically cooked. Just from using it. Because Hasbro did not lubricate the pusher, so the plastic that makes it up has worn itself down over time and is now in a state where it takes almost twice the amount of power to get it to rotate the same speed. Still using the same batteries, and I cannot change the power level without probably breaking the blaster because Elite 2.0 releases were clipped and solvent welded together. Imagine that! Do you have any idea how serious of a problem that is? This is a consumer-grade blaster meant for people to just buy and be able to use with no modifications. This is a blaster that is also designed to kill itself after an extended usage. I haven't even used this blaster much. I have used the Hyperfire and Rapid Strike way more, and I've never had to re-lubricate any of those parts or do any work to any of those parts, and they still work fine. This blaster simply doesn't, and I don't know why they made this decision, because it would have been so easy for them to fix it if they just put, like, a little bit more lubricant, just, like, one or two drops more lubricant. Nope, it is... Yeah. Also, let's talk about this lovely little problem. Mag insertion is a pain. I don't know what is wrong with the internals in there because they look smooth enough, but the locks that hold the magazine in and you're used to put the magazine in are so aggressive. There is no way to get it to mag drop without really shaking it. And even then, it's still unreliable. Sometimes it mag drops, sometimes it won't. It's a roll of dice that is heavily stacked against you. And if you still aren't convinced about the quality control issue, that's funny the first few times it happens, but once you've seen the mag door fall off like 500 times, 600 times, it's just sad. It's just depressing. This is a blaster that I actually had high hopes for when it first came out because it looked cool and it looked promising for the Elite 2.0 series. And when I first got it, I loved it. It was comfortable. It still is comfortable. It looks cool. It actually feels pretty okay considering the thin plastic. I think they actually built up the shell really well around it. But then, the blaster part of the blaster has failed. It's designed to kill itself. This is a blaster that you can't trust because eventually it's just going to be unusable. And I can't open it because it's clipped together. It's really sad, but this is genuinely the worst fully automatic blaster in my collection. And yes, I said that with the Titan CS50 staring at me from the tray over there. This is worse than the Titan CS50 because at least with the Titan CS50, I can open it and do work to it. Not something I can do here, and I don't want to try to open it because I'd rather not create more cuts in my hand. But hold on, hold on, there is one last glimmer of hope for this thing. The Shockwave. This blaster that I have here has no clips holding it together. Once you take the grips off, it pops right open. This, I believe, is a newer release of the Shockwave that fixed the clips problem. Which means that if you were to get a turbine now, chances are there's not going to be any clips or solvent welds holding it together, and you'll be able to open it just as easily as the Shockwave is, provided you can get past the grips. So hear me out. You might actually be able to use this thing for something if you are a modder and you want to use this shell. If you just want to use a stock fully automatic blaster, get anything else. Get a Hyperfire, a Rapid Strike, a Regulator, an Infinis, even the Titan CS50. I don't care. You will be happier with any of those than with this, because this thing will eventually kill itself, and if you don't have the tech know-how to figure out how to fix it, there's nothing you can do about it. With all that said, though, if you do want to get one of these, I'll link it in the description below. Please don't get one of these. Please get something nicer, but you can get one, and I'll link it in the description below. And with that said, happy Snake Day! I'll see y'all next time. Bye.